Welcome to Structure Fishing. As Buck Perry says, knowledge is the key to fishing success. Structure Fishing is a show that is packed with fishing knowledge. Regardless of your skill level or where you fish or what you fish for, you will learn something on each show that will help you catch more fish. We'll take you on the water and into the classroom. Let's see what we have for you on today's show. Coming up later on HLS News, record muskie caught in Green Bay. Stay tuned for that full story and more later on in the show. Weather is probably the most often used excuse for not catching fish. In today's classroom session, we're going to discuss weather and how it affects our fishing. But now, we're going on the water. I'm fishing with my son Casey in southern Illinois on Lake of Egypt. This is a great largemouth bass lake. We're fishing in the middle of the summer, a period that most fishermen would say it's the dog days of the summer and the fish aren't biting because of the heat. But as a structure fisherman, we know with good weather conditions, this is one of the best times of the year to go fishing. Fishing in southern Illinois on Lake of Egypt, a very good bass lake and crappie lake. It's the middle of the summer, we got peak conditions, and the fish want a fast speed. Our depth control and speed control is critical to catch fish today. Often in the middle of the summer, you hear about the dog days of the summers and the fish aren't biting. Well. All you have to do is increase your speed control with the right depth control and you're going to put fish in the live well. This bar that comes out here and we're going to troll it, we're going to make straight line passes on it and that's going to tell us the size and shape of this bar. Now I've got a marker ready. When I come across the crown of the bar I'm going to throw it out and that's going to serve as a visual aid as to where we are in relationship to that bar. All right, ready, Casey? Yep. All right, let's let out our line here. We're using a Buck Perry spoon plug, which is a great lure to use because it was built with depth and speed. Oh, <laughs> Casey just got one as we put it the lower out. That didn't take long at all. All right. <laughs> we just hit the tip of, we just hit the edge of that bar, and Casey's got a nice fish on right now. As you can see there, I mean, we were trolling faster. That was, we were going about four and a half to five miles per hour when that fish hit. That's the kind of speed control it takes in summer days like this to get these fish to hit. Casey, come on, come over here. Sit down. That's a nice one. That's an average size one here. <laughs> uh, he's about a 14, oops, 14, 15 incher. We're gonna let that guy, we're gonna let that guy go. And we didn't even hit the school yet. I, this guy was off to the side. I think there's a bigger school waiting for us there. Good job, Casey. All right, we're going to make our second pass on this structure here now. All right, Casey, let out. Now, the structure we're fishing is we're in the main channel and there's a feeder creek going in. And every time the main channel or the, the feeder creek intersects with the main channel, it's going to form a bar. Oh, oh, <laughs> I just got one here. Boy, I, here, Casey, here, real mine in here. And every time that feeder creek comes out and joins that main channel, it's going to make a structure, a nice bar. Oh, there we go. A nice. Oh. No. <laughs> I thought I had one reeling us in here. But these fish are hanging right on this structure, and once again, it's speed control. As you can see, how fast we were going. It was about four and a half, five miles per hour to get that fish. It's about the same size as the other one. Looks like he's hooked on the side. All right, good job. All right, yeah, bring him over here. Yep. All right. Swipe added there. There you go. Yeah, it's a smaller than average one that we've been getting out here, but I think there's a big school of them out there. We're, gonna, we're still working to get to them. All right, good job, Casey. 
Right. A marker is a valuable tool. You know, a lot of people think with GPSs and your you got your waypoints on there that mark. Oh, oh. got a fish. Ah, Casey just got a fish. We got a marker out there, and there's nothing that beats the aid of a. Ah, he came on. Oh, he jumped. Uh, we just lost the fish there, but I don't know if you can see, we've got a marker out there. So we pretty much know where that fish came from. More than likely, it's from a school. I want to make another pass on it to see if we can not pinpoint them a little better here. But as I was saying, a marker is a very valuable tool. You know, a lot of people think, oh, I've got a GPS, I don't need a marker, you know. GPSs are great, you get a waypoint on there, it'll get you in the area. But a marker is a great visual aid. You've got it on the water, you can orientate yourself with your position with that marker. You know exactly where you are on the water with that marker out there. There's nothing that replaces a marker. It's a valuable tool that you need to have in your boat. He started the modern day era of freshwater fishing. He is known as the father of structure fishing. His discoveries and teachings have brought pleasure and success to millions of fishermen who never even heard his name. He was inducted into the Freshwater Fishing Hall of Fame and the Bass Hall of Fame. He is Buck Perry, founder of the National Spoon Pluggers of America. The National Spoon Pluggers of America continues on today. It is an educational organization comprised of some of the best structured fishermen and clubs across America. The National Spoon Pluggers of America's non-competitive supportive atmosphere is focused on sharing and helping each other and where fishing is still a family sport. For a $30 yearly membership to the National Spoon Pluggers of America, you will receive a bi-monthly newsletter that contains articles by certified instructors who are experienced and intimately familiar with the techniques to help you catch more fish. Receive access to back issues. Receive Spoon Pluggers of America boat decal and patch. Receive an autographed portrait of Buck Perry, a copy of Buck Perry's basic fishing guidelines. You will be invited and welcomed to attend networking events and outings held all over the country. At these outings, you will have opportunities to learn from the best there is, to ask questions and get real answers. You will receive a directory and have access to members and clubs across the country. As Buck says, knowledge is the key to fishing success. Start your knowledge now and become a member. Log on to www.nsoa.info to join. Hey, welcome to the classroom. Today's subject is weather. Fishermen use weather as an excuse for not catching fish more than all the other excuses combined. We're going to shed some light on how weather conditions affect our fishing and fish activity. When we talk about weather, most fishermen think of temperature. We should look at temperature in terms that it can make it comfortable or uncomfortable for us on the water. A fish is cold-blooded. The fish's temperature is the same as the water, so a fish is comfortable at any temperature. Temperature will slow down or speed up his body functions. In cold water, his digestion of food is slow, his growth is slow, and his activity periods are slow. In warmer temperature, he grows faster, moves better, eats more and fights more. But remember, at any temperature, he is still comfortable. We should think of weather in terms of light. The lighter or brighter it is, the tougher fishing will be. The darker the conditions, the better it will be. There are several different types of weather conditions. We need to start with a guideline, and that will be the cold front. Buck Perry was the first one to talk about how a cold front affects fish movements over 50 years ago. Now today, most all fishermen know that a cold front will slow fishing down. Let's take a look at a cold front. This is how a cold front looks on a weather map. A cold front is the dividing line between two air masses, one that is warmer, holding higher moisture content, and the other is drier, cooler mass of air. It doesn't necessarily mean a drop in temperature, but the more of a difference in temperature between the two air masses, the more storms and precipitation that will come. When viewing a cold front, we don't look at it in terms of temperature, but in terms of light conditions. The prefrontal conditions are normally darker conditions with cloud cover and higher humidity levels. Postfrontal conditions have drier air that moves in and brighter washed out skies will usually follow. Prefrontal conditions will give good fish movements and postfrontal conditions 
will give bad or very little fish movements. Let's take a look and see how it is day one after a cold front. The sky is clear and is a bit windy following the front. The school of fish retreat to their cold front sanctuary below the 38 foot drop off. Some of the smaller fish will go to the 26 foot break line. On day two after the front, some snowball clouds will appear, a decrease in wind will also. The smaller fish may move to the 20 foot rock pile and a couple of the larger fish may move to the 26 foot break line for a very short period of time before returning back to the main school below the 38 foot drop off. On day three, there will be an increase in temperature, some high serious clouds begin to form, the smaller fish may move to the 12 foot break line for a short period of time, and the school of big fish will move back to their normal sanctuary depth between the 38 foot drop off and the 26 foot break line. And a few of the fish will move to the 26 foot break line for a short period of time. On day four, another slight increase in temperature, we have some high serious clouds and haze foaming. The smaller fish move to the seven foot weed line, but the school of fish move to the 26 foot break line and some moving to the 20 foot rock pile and maybe one or two briefly moving to the 12 foot break line. The movement period may last for 30 minutes before the school returns to the deep water sanctuary. On day five, no morning change in the weather and the fish move as the previous day. By early afternoon, another layer of clouds move in and it becomes noticeably muggy. The fish move again in the afternoon with the whole school of fish moving to the 20 foot rock pile and a few moving as far as the 12 foot break line. With the added cloud cover and humidity building, Light conditions are better and the afternoon movement may last for 45 minutes before they move back to the deep water sanctuary. On day six, heavy cloud cover with rain approaching. The school of fish move to the 12 foot break line and a few big fish are found on the seven foot weed line. Good action occurs most of the day with a noticeable fish activity in the mid morning and early afternoon. On day seven, it's a bright clear day. The front moved through last night. The school of fish retreat to their deep water sanctuary with little or no movements. Cold front and light conditions affect all species of fish, both freshwater and saltwater. Some fish species are affected more than others. Smaller fish don't seem to be as affected as much as the larger fish. Some species that are least affected and begin to show signs of movement or activity first would be northerns, walleyes, and then muskies. The next group would be white bass, smallmouth bass, and last is largemouth bass. Before there is any great movement of fish of the school, you'll see smaller fish getting active and moving first. So pay attention to the weather conditions before your next fishing trip. You may decide to fish a lake further south or stay ahead of an approaching cold front, or maybe target a different species. Or better yet, you may decide you might have called in sick that day and get out fishing. For more information on this classroom subject, as well as any others, check out structurefishing.com education. Yes, it is. Oh, it hurt. Flops. Up 
that bad. Not a big one, but pretty good one. Nice size. Let's get the hook out. Let's get the hook out. Unlock the power of HDS with your fingertips. The power to find a needle in a haystack. You will outsmart the fish. Get there first with confidence and always stay one step ahead of Mother Nature. Find, navigate, dominate with the new HDS Gen 2 Touch from Lowrance. XI-5 from Motor Guide, a wireless trolling motor engineered for anglers by anglers, delivering key performance attributes with power, toughness, stealthy, quiet operation. And for you control freaks, our optional pinpoint GPS navigation system lets you position your boat precisely where the fish are, instantaneously, accurately, built to earn you bragging rights. Meet the all new XI-5, only from Motor Guide. Would you like to catch more and bigger fish consistently? Are you tired of all the gimmicks out there? Buck Perry once stated that knowledge is the key to fishing success, not a fancy lure or the latest equipment. For a fraction of the price of a fishing guide, purchase Buck Perry's Guidelines for Fishing Success. This eight-volume home study course will guide you step by step and go over all the mechanics to become a successful fisherman. After completing this home study course, you'll have long-term success that will allow you to feel comfortable on any any lake you fish and for any species. For more information and to purchase this home study course, visit structurefishing.com forward slash education. Like a snake. Felt like a snake. But it was a big mess. 
Welcome to HLS News, your hook, line, and sinker news. I'm Candace Pierce. The Bay of Green Bay has been noted for many years for its trophy musky fishing. John Grover of Green Bay was fishing for walleye from the shore at the mouth of the bay this past May when he hooked into what could have been a record musky. After about an hour battle, Grover was able to land the fish. After a quick picture and measurement, the fish was revived and released. Grover said the fish was measured at 64 inches long. He didn't think it was close to a record as he imagined a record fish might be in this 70 inch range. It wasn't until a visit to the local bait shop and commented about the 64 inch muskie that he had caught. After some disbelief, Grover produced a picture of the fish. The fish was not weighted on a scale, but based on the length and girth, it is possible it could have been bigger than the current record that was caught in the Chippewa flowage in 1949. That fish was 63 and a half inches long and weighed in at 69 pounds 11 ounces. Vexilar, a marine electronics company out of Minneapolis, Minnesota, has introduced a new product, the Sonar Phone. You can now turn your smartphone or tablet into an advanced sonar system. You don't need cell phone coverage to use it. It uses Wi-Fi technology to communicate your smartphone or tablet with the Vexilar transducer. There's a portable transducer and a permanent transducer available. Multiple users can be connected at the same time. To see all the features and capabilities of this device, you can download the app for free. For more information, please visit Vexilar.com. And for all of you Illinois boat owners, the Illinois Department of Natural Resources is no longer mailing watercraft registration renewal notices. You will have to renew on your own or online at the Illinois DNR website or by phone by dialing the number on the screen. Also, on all non-motorized watercraft such as canoes and kayaks are no longer required to be titled or registered in Illinois. Instead, you will have to purchase a water usage stamp for a $6 annual fee. Water usage stamps are mandatory for all non-motorized crafts in Illinois. The water usage stamp may be purchased online or through vendor locations. For more information, please visit the Illinois DNR website. Maryland has a new state record largemouth bass. 12-year-old Colton was fishing a pond in his hometown of Huntingtown, Maryland. The bass was 26 inches long and weighed in at 11 pounds, 6 ounces. That's your hook, line, and sinker news for the day. Thanks for watching. Before heading to your boat and every time you leave the dock, have all the detailed bottom structure you need to target fish, offshore humps, ledges, creek channels, road beds, shown with the most accurate contour lines from Navionics. And it just keeps getting better with sonar charts. Submit your sonar logs for better local charts. The freshest data every day for your chart plotter and mobile device. View our charts online at Navionics.com. Introducing the next generation of Sonar. Sonar Phone by Vexlar, the world's first smart device sonar. Download the free app. Try the demo feature and see why Sonar Phone will rival the performance of Sonar systems costing hundreds more. The Sonar Phone does not require cell phone coverage. You create your own Wi-Fi hotspot and can share with your friends. Download the free app today. And for a limited time, with any purchase of a Sonar Phone, you get a free smartphone armband. That's the Sonar Phone by Vexlar. Hey, Josh, I, uh, I don't say this often enough, but I think you are a great kid. And you mean the world to me. You know that, right? When you take them fishing with America's favorite reel, it says a lot. The all-new Zebco 33 family of reels. Meet America's favorite streaming players. The biggest streaming channel lineup. Over 200,000 movies and TV episodes. Roku, now this is TV. Are you looking to better understand fish movements and how fish use structure? It's a fact that learning to eliminate unproductive water quickly is a major key in fishing success. Do you want to feel comfortable on any lake you fish? Then hire a certified structure fishing instructor today. Jerry and John are certified structure fishing instructors through the Buck Perry Training Center. These CSIs will go out to your lake and teach you proper lure presentation, how to interpret a map, how to find and locate productive structure. They'll give you your own personalized instruction, both on and off the water. Past students include professional guides, 
tournament anglers, and regular weekend warriors seeking to better understand structure. Both John and Jerry fish the waters throughout the Midwest and beyond. Jerry's home base is Northern Illinois, and John resides in North Central Indiana. Instruction rates vary on distance traveled and days of instruction. Please contact John or Jerry to schedule your own personal instruction. A bass here. Chilling on the tip of the bar just to see where the fish are at. As you can see, the so-called dog days of summer are anything but that. With the right depth and speed control and some good weather conditions, you can make a good catch on any lake. Lake of Egypt does not have a high definition contour map available, but this basic map that shows the main channel is all that's really needed. As we said in the basic movements of the fish, the home of the fish is in the deepest water available in the area that you're fishing. In the case of a reservoir or man-made lake, that would be the original main channel. We then concentrated our fishing efforts on the structures where the main channel and the feeder creek channels met. I hope you enjoyed watching today's show. For more information on the structures that were fished today and where we caught the fish, visit Fishity for free and send a buddy request to Structure Fishing.